This is Lesson 27 in our Calculus 1 series, Indefinite Integrals. This is just a quick video lesson to introduce some new notation for the antiderivatives that we've already been taking. The evaluation of the definite integral that we saw in the last lesson using the antiderivative leads us to use the following notation for antiderivatives. Here we have the same elongated s integral symbol, but now we have without bounds. There are no numbers a and b here. And this notation means the general antiderivative of f of x. So it's just a new notation that we have to symbolize the antiderivative of a function. So for example, the integral of 3 radical x minus 5 over radical x dx is equal to the integral of 3x to the 1 half minus 5x to the negative 1 half. Remember that we first want to write these in the notation that we need for our antiderivative rules. Now we can take antiderivatives by adding a power and dividing by that number. And so we're here and we add in our constant and simplifying we have 2x to the 3 halves minus 5x to the 1 half plus a constant. So again, without the upper and lower bounds here, we have no numbers at which we want to evaluate the antiderivative, so we're just giving the general antiderivative here, including the constant c. So we always want to have the plus c with the indefinite integrals. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have the integral of t times t plus 3 dt. Now we don't yet have a rule for taking the antiderivative of a product of functions, so before we take an antiderivative we need to distribute our t, so we have t squared plus 3t inside the integral. Now we want to take an antiderivative, that's t to the third over 3 plus 3t squared over 2 plus a constant. Let's take a look at another integral of u radical u du. Again, we don't have a rule for a product of functions, so we want to write this as u to the 3 halves power before we take an antiderivative. Now we'll take an antiderivative by adding 1 to the power and dividing by that number, so we have 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus c. So again, this notation, this indefinite integral, just means take the antiderivative, the general antiderivative. Let's take a look at another. Here we have sine 2x over sine x dx. Now we know that we don't have a rule for taking the antiderivative of a quotient of functions, so we're definitely going to need to do a little bit of simplification first. Also, I want you to keep in mind sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So you're going to want to start with that simplify, and then take your antiderivative. Please pause the video and work on that. So rewriting our sine 2x as 2 sine x cosine x, we realize we can simplify here, and this simplifies to 2 cosine x. Now we can take our antiderivative, that's 2 sine x plus c. And so here we're just seeing a new notation for antiderivatives. So I want you to get used to seeing this indefinite integral. It's the integral sign without bounds on it, and it means that we're finding the general antiderivative. And this concludes our lesson on indefinite integrals.